Good evening. Thank you for joining us for tonight's Inspiration webinar. Inspiration Software is the embroidery software line of G7 Solutions and Designs and Machine Embroidery. Our Inspiration line includes My Block Piecer, My Quilt Embellisher, Perfect Embroidery Pro, and Perfect Stitch Viewer, and the new Word Art in Stitches. Tonight's webinar features our My Block Piecer featuring Quilting from Scratch, Part 1. We have a wonderful team assisting us tonight. Dory, Manager of the Tech Support, Nancy R., Lisa Knight, one of our educators, and I would like to present you to our family member, Tamara Evans, who will keep us all in pieces. <laughs> Take Thank it away. You, Thank you, Dory. Uh, that was cute. Okay, welcome everybody. I've had a lot of questions as I've traveled around the country teaching the software and emails from people on how do you create your own quilt blocks in the software. There's many ways to achieve that and we're going to go over some of those tonight. Um, you know, as we know when we first start with the program and in our block catalog here we have 1,263 blocks. But we all know that that is not enough. We always want to do something different. We've got a block of the month that we want to see if we can piece in the hoop. We've got uh, seen a block on in a magazine, or we've purchased a pattern, or we've seen them on Pinterest. And I encourage all of you to play with different blocks and see what you come up with. Now, I'm going to shut down the block catalog for a minute. And let's start with a simple picture of a block. I'm coming over here on the left-hand side of my screen and click on the backdrop tool. Here is where I can store pictures, JPEGs, um, pictures of things I'd like to try and create, things that I have created, um, you know, whether it be something off of Pinterest or a picture from a pattern or I scan it or I draw it, um, I can put it in here and bring those up as a backdrop. And it's kind of a fun thing to do to look at blocks. Well, I think it's a fun thing to do. Some people may not to figure out the puzzle of how to put it together. Let's start with a fairly simple block. We'll do this on point JPEG. And I'm going to open that up. Now, I've already looked through, you know, blocks. Um, and I don't see this particular one, but that is the easiest way to turn this into artwork, especially since this isn't clean artwork, okay? It's got fabric on it. So if I was to use a method with the magic wand to convert it into artwork, it's not going to be pretty. Let me show you what happens. I'll select my artwork tool and my magic wand. I've got it set for fill over in properties. I like to do that because it helps me visualize the space. And let's just change our color to red and click on the center block here. And you'll see it's put little dots in there where those other, uh, where the fabric has polka dots on it. So that's not really going to be a workable solution. So we use our friendly undo key. And then I want to see if I've got something close in my uh, quilting blocks over in this section. So we'll go to our block catalog, go to diamond in a square. Let me move it over a little bit so we can see it and see if something looks close. Well, I think this dancing nine patch is pretty, pretty close. So let's select it. and bring it onto the screen. I'm just going to go ahead and use the 8 by 8 inch default, but of course I could set the size to whatever I want to right now, or I can change it later. So we'll pick the default. Now when it comes onto the screen, here's what happens. We lose our other backdrop because the blocks, when you bring a block onto the screen from the block catalog, it includes a backdrop. I just have to turn it on here, and there you can see it. So if I was actually going to do something different with these, uh, you know, or change colors, I still have my original block in the background. 
but we really don't need that anymore. So I'm going to turn it off. And I could copy this. Here's an easy way to do it if you want to see the backdrop with this. I am going to, it's all selected, right click and copy, then open up a new page, bring up my original backdrop, because I want to make sure it looks just the same right here on point. And that is eight inches. And we'll just move it over some and scroll out just a hair, right click, whoops, click select, then right click and paste. Now I have my other block next to it. So that's one way to be able to see both a different backdrop from the block that you bring in from the catalog. Now all we have to do is change up our block. The first thing I'm going to do is select this checkerboard in the center all of the pieces of it. And to do that, I hold down my control key while I click each one of those so it selects all of them. And come down, I'm going to right click to turn that green. So now we have the solid square in the center, almost. Let's go to our sequence view on the right hand side here. And uh, if I select the green, it's selecting all of those pieces. I want that to be a solid square, which right now I can still, those are still uh, like a checkerboard in the center, even though they're all the same color and with triangles around it. But I want it to be solid, so I select all of the green and come up to the top to my favorite little icon, Combine, and click on Combine, and now it makes it one object. Whereas before, if we expand the view in our sequence, you see we've got lots of different pieces of artwork there. Actually, 9 plus 4, 13. I can do that math. Uh, so let's select it again. Select the green. Selects all of it and combine. And now it's simply one piece right here. All right, so the next step, now you're still going to see the lines in it, but that doesn't matter. We'll, it will still keep it as one unit. Then I simply need to change the other colors to match the colors on this. So let's take the blue squares, and I think I just scooted that one a little bit. I did, so I just do a Control Z to undo or click my undo button up here. Let's select all the blue ones and make those green as well. And now, all I have to do is select the green color, and if I want to change the color to closer match my block, I'll change that to pumpkin. Ooh, that doesn't really match very well at all. Let's try something not quite, and this is entirely up to you. It's not necessary to the process, but if it helps you to visualize, then by all means. And then the other color is this color number nine, and I can click on that and change it to more of a uh, navy teal, hmm. more of an olive green color, verbena, I like that one. So now it's a little bit, well, it's really not that close, but you get the idea. Then from this point, I can get rid of my backdrop, select my block, and go into the building process. Go to my workflow tool, and you'll see the center here, it fuses as one block. Now, let's click Auto Build. Ah, now, let's see what's happened here, is it doesn't know how to build it now. So, we can assign the numbers, and we'll get back to that in just a minute. Let's go on to another way to build this block. We've got our artwork done, and that's good. Another way we could do it, is with our artwork tool. So I'm going to open up a new file. Let's bring that backdrop up and select the same backdrop again, only this time instead of combining them um, and using another block, we'll just go to our artwork tool up here. Let's select a rectangle. And let's do this center rectangle first. 
we can just draw one. And let's change our color, oh, make it red. And or you could select it to look just like the other one. And I'm going to rotate it and then move it up into the corner here so that it matches. And I can scroll in to see that really well. And oops, let's don't do it that way. Let's um, go to our shape tool and pull each of the nodes into these four corners. Okay, so it's very easy to reshape. It's only got four nodes to it. If we look over here in our tool, they're almost perfect, but not quite. So we can zoom in here and see where we need to adjust. And I think one of them is right here in this corner. Click on the shape tool again and just pull that over a little bit. And we'll check all of the corners. I have my grid set up in half inch measurements so it's easy to see exactly where to move those nodes. Okay. And we'll go to this side. And that one looks pretty spot on. All right. And the top. And that one looks pretty good. Okay, so we've got that square built. Now, let's do this square. We still have our square selected. Click on our artwork tool again and use our rulers to help us. This is an eight inch block, so this square is exactly two inches. If I pull that out this way, and I could have changed the color to begin with. Then let's look at our measurements over here. I want to make it two by two exactly. I just click apply and there we go. Then I'm going to change to the green color. This time we'll select a triangle. Now a triangle always makes that kind of a triangle. So, and I don't know what that's called, but a, a regular triangle. So what I need to do now is pull out my points to line up my three points where I want them down here. And you can see over at the side where you kind of line up with the ruler or up here at the top. As soon as I let go, it'll go away. But you see that little line going across the top ruler? It tells you exactly where you're lined up. So I want to be right on the two there and right on the two there and let go. Then bring this one right on the mark. And the hard part's done. So let's select this triangle now. Right click, copy it, right click, paste, and we're going to pull it over here. And there you go. All right, Oop, that's not quite snugged up there. If you hold the control key down and use the arrow keys, it lets you do very, very small movements to get them more precisely positioned. I'm going to select just that corner. Let's group it. That'll make it easier to move. Then I'm going to copy it and paste it, rotate it two clicks, and pull it over here so it's lined up on that side. Then I can select both of them since they stay grouped and copy and paste, and I could mirror image, or again, I could rotate and move that down here. Now, you can also use your alignment tools to get some fine alignments done. These two I could click on and come up to align to the center point. It moves them in the same way with these two and align them to the center. And there we have our block. And we can do some other fine tuning. This one looks like it's a little bit off. So I'll put it back in and just scroll in. But that's an easy way to build a block that then you can take in to um, the processor and do it. Or 
if you don't want to do it in the hoop, you can also take this into the cutter. You can audition fabrics now and everything, just like you would with a block that came out of the block library. So those are two methods. We'll do one more simple one, and then we'll take questions. I'm going to open up a new page. Let's bring up another backdrop. This is a very simple um, partial log cabin. I can find where I put them. Here we go. And I'll click and open that. Now, you would want to adjust the size if you choose. Here I can change my size to, you know, if I want that to be 6.5 inches finished, I can do that and make it that size. Now, because this one has really nice clear artwork, we can use the other feature of the software, the magic wand. I select my artwork tool because I want to create artwork, but I don't have to select a shape. Then I click on my artwork tool, and I can select a color, and simply click on a color to change it. Now, I'm not going to match them to the, this particular block. What I am going to do is just change the colors because I want each of these to be different, and I'll keep building the block. And the sequence isn't necessarily important when you're doing this, but when you go to create it, you may need to change your sequence, which is easy to do. So now we have the block built. Let's select the whole block, go to our workflow tool, and see if we can auto-build. And we can. So it's lined all of those up for me. Even though um, my numbers were not in sequence, I didn't build it in the sequence that's going to stitch, I can change those numbers right now, remember with sort numbers, and say yes. Now I know that piece one goes to two, to three, to four, to five, to six, to seven. And I can preview the design and save it as I like. Now, one of the things you may notice, this is a little trick that I do myself um, when I'm just playing with blocks and seeing if I can create them. I don't worry about what the hoop size is going to be. I've created a big hoop that's actually 15 inches by 15 inches. Now, I don't really have that big of a hoop, but I can create it with the hoop tool on the main page so that I don't have to worry about that part. I want to build it, and then I'll figure out how I'm going to stitch it in the hoop, if that makes sense. So, Dory, how are we doing so far? Any questions? Yes, we do. That was very okay. good. I have a couple questions, but I'll probably ask you later because there's not enough time. Is there yes. a snap to grid in the program? Yes, there is, and you can turn that on in Tools, General Options, and go to, let's see, oh, grid, duh, and click on snap to grid, which I should have done before I started this, and it would have been easier. Uh, I Sometimes I have that on for reasons, and other times I have it off. So, yes, that should make it uh, easier at this point. So when you uh, create a shape, it will snap to that grid. And if you can, and you can set your grid to multiple sizes. Go to your grid settings. So if you've got one inch squares that you're dealing with, or like we were a minute ago, two inch squares, I can make both the horizontal and vertical the same size and deal with it that way. Good question. Okay. Um, I also got from Cheryl. If I create a block and save it as a C2S. Is mm -hmm. it resizable? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it, there, yes. And one of the things that I'll show you in a few minutes is taking blocks from uh, my quill embellisher, which has, you know, almost twice as many blocks in it, but they're not all achievable in, a, in the hoop, the whole block, and build those in here. So we'll look at that. Um, um, as well. So this is just basic block building that we're doing here, creating your own from different pictures. Let's try another one. I'm going to do one of the ones uh, that seems to be fairly popular is called the Hunter Star. 
And I looked around online and found um, a few different variations of the Hunter Star. Here is one. Now this one is quite small, but you see how it works. And sometimes this is white and this would be blue and it's two colors, sometimes it's multicolors and all of that. But we can build the basic block. And I found another one because this is quite small. This is only three inches by three inches, this image. So if I want to make this as big as I want it to be, let's say we want to do, I don't know, uh, an eight inch block. I'm going to click Apply. Now you can see how pixelated that is. And I could draw it out, but I found another one that's a lot clearer so I can use my magic wand. So I'm going to select that one. Let's open up a new page and go back to the backdrop and pull up the other Hunter's star right here. Now you'll notice this that I'm pulling up. Let me change the colors for you and then you'll see how it relates to the other block. Um, well, we have to build it before we can change the colors. But we're just going to use two colors. I'm going to use blue and green. So I'm going to select my blue by right clicking on it. Then come up to my artwork tool. Select my magic wand. I'm going to select to have it fill so we see the visual. And I want this to be blue. And I want this to be blue. And I want this to be blue. And this to be blue. Then I'm going to change to green and make the rest of my pieces green. Now, if we look at that block and go back to our previous uh, section here, let me scroll out a bit. This is the same block. It's this square right here. It's just that this one has white in the center instead of blue. So if we wanted to see the one we just made in a larger, uh, you know, group them together and see what they look like, let's just take the whole block. And I do this frequently uh, to create a backdrop. Um, I will group the entire block and then copy it. Let's do copy and and a paste. If you have a Perfect Embroidery Pro software, you can use the repeat feature and then it does it for you automatically. Um, so we can just copy and paste. Let's get those aligned mm, on the bottom. And I'm just going to scooch it over a little bit. Since it's grouped, it's easy to maneuver. And let's, ah, let's line them up better again at the top. Now you guys should line up a little nicer than that. Let's see. Oh, okay, so oh, what did I just do? Oh, I think I have multiple blocks there. I do. How did I do that? Anyway, we were going to need another one. Let's put it down here. And select them all. Let's move it up in the corner here. So we can get it working and let's do this one again. Control insert is another option. Control insert and shift insert rather than right click, copy, paste. And we'll get these lined up. Okay, so now I have four blocks. I'm just missing that backdrop. And I'm going to select these two and align them that way. These two. Align them this way, and that looks pretty close, but this isn't really how the block's supposed to look. So let's rotate these. One, two, aha. And if I come down here and rotate this one, is that the way our block looks? I don't know. Let's take a peek here. Oh, if I just pull up, um, two, two. So, oh, no, because our star has them going every other way. So we'll go back and change this one, rotate it twice, not twice, but 
three times, four times. Rotate this one four times. Da, 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 da. And now we're good to go. So there's a hunter's star block. Uh, now to create your in the hoop block for that, you could select all of it, but it's too big to hoop. So here's what we're going to do. Um, the hooping process, we could do try um, we, by looking at it. And let's go back to our original block. I'm going to eliminate this one, this one, and this one. If we look at this block and analyze the block, where it's got, if you've done a lot of foundation piecing, it's pretty easy to look at a block and figure out the puzzle and how it's going to go together. This one, it's going to do this section right here first and then add this. So here I've got one, two, and three, or one, two, and three, four. And then it's got to do this section, this half, and it's easy to see the halves if we rotate it like this. So it'll do this half, and then it will do this half. So let's select that, ungroup, and let's just do half of it, because I want to make this really large. So I'm going to select this half, and right now, how big is my square? Oh, it's not that big. It's only 8 inches. So let's make it really large. We're going to do a 12-inch block. Right now, it's just 6 by 6. We'll do a 12-inch block by 12 inches. I had taken maintain aspect ratio off earlier, but you can leave that on if you like. And now it's easiest to select just the half if I rotate it. Because then I can just drag, oops, drag my selection tool around it. Then go to my workflow tool. I don't have to pick the entire block. And sometimes if you have a block that's not going together well for you, this is the easiest way to do it. Now the first thing I'm going to try is auto build. And it said, no solution was found. Build the tree manually. So I click OK. Now, I know the way this is sequenced, the numbers aren't right. So let's close it and try renumbering it first. And the renumber or reorder tool is right here. You click on it. Then we click on our first patch, or what we want to number as the first patch the second patch, the third patch, and the fourth one, and right-click to set it. Then let's select that again, go into our workflow tool, and see if we can auto-build. No, but now it's much easier to put together. I'm going to say do patch one to patch two, right-click, group those. Then I want to add patch three and group that with it and then patch 4 will be added. I don't click auto build at this point, I go to my preview. And there you have the design. So if you can't use auto build for some reason, you reorder the block yourself and use your auto and use your um, ordering function. It's very easy to do a single unit that way. And with this block, all we need to do is that single unit. I could take both sides back in then and put them together. But you know what? With this block, I'm going to do it on my sewing machine. Because it's um, when I finish all of the quarters or the halves of them, then I'll put those together to make the block. And then I'll put the blocks together to make the whole quilt. It's that simple. Any questions on that, Dory? Well, we'll try another block then. Uh, let's go in and we'll do an, another one where we um, select it like that. Let's go to uh, a little bit more difficult one, new file. And this time I'm going to go to my library and select a block that I saved from uh, my block piecer. Now, when I pull this in, it's actually quite small. 
Let's change the size of it. This is just a four inch block. Let's make it eight inches just for grins. If I say maintain aspect ratio, then it does it eight to eight for me and click apply. Now, if I go to build this, automatically auto build, it doesn't like it. So let's go back, close out of here, and let's go back and number it. Now, if you've ever done a log cabin, this is very similar to a regular log cabin, but this one has a little triangle effect in there like a pineapple block, really. But we can build it because there are no Y seams. I'm going to select um, the block first and ungroup it. Then let's number it. I'm going to go up here to my reorder tool and say this is my first block. Then I need to do these two blocks. And then I need to do this one. And it doesn't matter if I pick this one or this one. This is the next step. You see it covers that up and that up. Then I'm going to put the triangles on each end. Then I keep building my block. I can't do this one yet because I haven't done this one, and it's got to go the complete way over, if that makes sense. Look at some foundation piecing blocks, and you'll see how they build on each other if this is confusing for you. Um, we want to completely cover this edge. Now I can put on the purple blocks and completely cover those. And then I add the yellow corners. Then I go back to the shortest ones on this side, this one and this one, the longer ones and the corners. Okay, so I have my block numbered. Now, if we select the entire block, we go to our workflow tool. We can try auto build and it doesn't like it, but you know what? This is exactly how this is going to go together in the sequence that we have. Let's see if we can just skip to preview. Nope, we can't. So we're going to select one to two to three. Those go together and group. Then we're going to add four. Whoops, so keep that one selected. Add four and group. Then add five and group. And I'm just holding down the control key. Whoops the control key and clicking on the next unit and then right click and click group. Hold down the control key, click on the next unit, right click, group. Next unit, right click, group and just keep doing that until we've got it built. Sometimes we are smarter than the program um, and we know we can build this block in a single looping. And let's group, 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 group. And we leave the last one because it'll automatically go with the rest of them. Now let's preview. And there you go. We just created that block to stitch in the hoop. Okay, Dory, I hear you there. Yes, you, you do. Denise asks, can I bring in a block from EQ7 into MVP? and design the same block to sew out? Well, yes, you can because it's artwork. Now, I actually have EQ7 as well, and I do like to play with a lot of the blocks in there. So let's open a new file, and I'm going to, there's two ways to do it, and I'm going to show you both of them. The easiest way is to come into File, and you would have exported that block as artwork, and just click Import Artwork. Now I have a Hunter Star here. I have, um, what's that block? Ooh, that looks tricky. Let's do a simpler one. Um, those are just some other tests I've got. Let's, well, let's do the Hunter Star. So I'm going to open that one. And I've imported the artwork. Now, this is exactly, I mean, I didn't have to create this artwork or anything. But let me show you what happens. Let's select the entire block and go to our transform. 
Well, this block is actually a quilt in and of itself. It is like 72 inches by 72 inches. So what you need to do at this point, since none of us have a hoop that big, if you do, send me an email, but I don't think any of us do at this point. I'm going to make that an 8-inch block. And just 8 inches, maintain aspect ratio of 5, or I can say 8 if I want it to be really precise. Uncheck that and make that a 0 and apply that. Now we have our block. And we can go back and change colors. So I've got my colors here. I'm going to make, let's see, I'll do pick the pink. Which pink is that? Ooh, it's that bubblegum pink. Let's make this block pink and select, right click on the pink, select, right click on the pink. Now let's take the blue. It's number 12. We're going to make this one, oops, left click, then right click, and then left click. Right click on the thread color or the block color uh, and right click there and there you go. I'm all set to go on that block. And yes, that is very simple to do, bringing them in from EQ7. You can export artwork. Just watch the size when you bring it in because the higher quality of artwork you choose, the bigger your block is going to be. And uh, I also recommend that you when you export, you have an option to put an outline around the patches on that block. Don't do that. Just make it solid. You don't want an extra, like a black outline or something around it. Um, the, these, although you see a black outline, I think I moved that one a minute ago. Um, it's actually uh, part of the block, so it's it's fine. So don't choose an outline with those. Now another option with EQ7. Here's another block that I saved as an image from EQ7 or any other program you've got out there that you can, you know, create quilt blocks or that have quilt blocks in them that are artwork. I can open this um, New York Beauty 2. Now, I can't piece this whole thing in the hoop because we don't do curved piecing. In the hoop. We can do a curved seam and make that an applique, but if you want to piece it, we can't piece that in the hoop. But what we can piece are the, the rays here coming out from what looks like a sun to me. And the way we would create that is select our color. I'll just pick royal blue here, right click on it, and click on my artwork tool and my magic wand. And then just come through, and I'm creating artwork now because that's a backdrop. Then I'm going to come back here and select the yellow. And I could do the same thing with this one up here. I'm just going to use the same colors for expediency's sake. And dismiss the backdrop. Now, I can piece that in the hoop because all of these are straight lines, right? Easy, easy. And that's the hard part of the star. But you know what the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring back up my backdrop. I still have my magic wand going here. I'm going to change my color down at the bottom, right click on the orange to pick up my orange color, and click on each of the orange sections. Come to my sequence view and select the orange color. This time I'm going to my cutter tool. Now in my cutting tool, I would probably select either paper or my uh, one of my cutter file options. If I do letter size paper here, it will print this for me. And you notice it's added that quarter inch seam allowance for me. It's right down here, one quarter inch. Uh, I can change that if I want to, but it works for everything in quilting so far. I'm going to leave it that way. And frame two is the other are the other two pieces. I could print those out on print and stick target paper, stick them to my fabric, and cut those out perfectly. Or my other option would be to take them to my cutting machine, whether it's the 
uh, rather scan and cut right here, and I could do a 12 by 12 frame or the silhouette, and then when I save it, it will save it as an FCM file that I can open up right there in my uh, Brother Scan and Cut or an SVG file that I can send to my silhouette. And I think it's an SVG file too for the as well for the new uh, Cricut ones that will read uh, art files, artwork files, such as the SVG. So, and then I'll just uh, put my fabric on the mat, have it cut out those curves, and then all that's left for me to do is to sew them to the blue and yellow sun rays that I created. That simple. Did that answer the question, George? It most certainly did. Um, when I create a piece from a background, Melissa asks, using the magic wand, the image is jagged. Is that going to affect my block? You know, when it goes to sew it, it depends. You see these are a little bit jagged as well. Um, when I saved the artwork, it may not have been, let's dismiss the backdrop here, um, as good a quality. And I may want to go back in on some of those and make them a little bit better. Uh, but, and you could do that easily by just selecting those and deleting everything but the points. See all these points here? If I come in and select those and just hit my delete key on my computer, I'm going to select everything but the last point. Oops, I don't want that point, so I'm going to delete it. Um, just select them and delete them. Now you see it starts to clean up my artwork quite well. So, yeah, and something like that, if they're really, oops, undo, did I get the end one? No. Um, if they're really jagged, yes, I would clean those up. That's a very good question. Okay. And it's that simple. Now that one affects our, our curve. So we want to make sure that that goes back where it's supposed to be. I'm going to do a, uh, an undo, control Z, and I'll just take these out a little bit at a time. But you can also select them. I could, here's a couple of options. And this is something to play with. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar, you can also add a point. And I can pull that point down here. Let me scroll in quite close so you can see. In your drawing tools, you've got different, um, you've got these nodes, and on them there are these marks that allow you to curve it. And I don't know the real names for them. Um, we'll find out and let you know in a later webinar. Suffice to say, it gives you control over what you're doing. And now, whoops, I don't want to undo that one. I want to get rid of this one. Delete. Okay. So now you can see I have a much nicer shaped, go back to my select tool, nicer shaped uh, wedge there than what these other ones are. So yes, I think that would be a good idea. If it's not real bad, um, I wouldn't worry about it. In fact, I would probably test it first just to see how that went because that is probably so minute there. Um, let's see how long that is. Mm, well, there's a half an inch and a little squiggly. I don't know if that will make much difference or not. It would be a good idea to test it. So, But, yes, you can fix it if you want to. All right. And that curve, Debbie reminded us, is a Bezier curve. Oh, thank you, Debbie. Bezier. Okay. I don't speak French. <laughs> is it French? I don't know. It is French, yes. Okay. All right. So, um, any other questions right now? Yes. Where is a good place to find quilt blocks that aren't in the program? Oh, Google. Go Google quilt blocks. I mean, they're all over the place. Uh, free quilt blocks are a lot of um, out there. If I go to my internet, Let's open a new window. Uh, 
and I just put in uh, what I did with the Hunter Star. Hunter Star Quilt Block Pattern Free. We'll select that and just come down here and click on the images. There you go. We see we have all these different ah. color stars that we can select from. And you can get different ideas on how to put it together. And this is really, ooh, that one's cool. Look at that. With the, uh, If you click on it, it'll bring up the whole picture. Now, sometimes what you want to watch out for is how pixelated the image is. If you uh, look over here, it will tell you the size of the image. That's a really, that's... Um, 432 pixels square, that's not a large image. Let's try another one. This one's 225. You want a larger image, and do pay attention. That's not very big. Do pay attention to copyrights. Um, I think that's important and fair. A lot of the images that you see online are not necessarily going to be superb uh, quality large images. Let's see. Now this one is. This one is 1500 by 1500. So that would be a very easy one to, uh, to use. However, you've got a pretty substantial outline around those, which means your blocks aren't going to be touching if you just click on the orange and the white and the green. Something like, that one's quite a bit smaller. Let's see if there's some other large ones here. But that one's in fabric. Um, oh, here's some more. Ooh, let's see what this one. And, and if you hover over them, you see 236 by 236. A lot of times from the Internet, they are going to be smaller blocks. But you can play with it. and see what you come up with. There's 384 on that one. That's not too bad. Um, but that block is actually already in the software, so <laughs> you don't need that one. Uh, oh, and the other thing you can do, let's, let's play with Mr. Rabbit. Um, the other thing you can do if you find pictures that you like, and here's one that I found that I like. Let's go back, uh, make a new page. Here's the backdrop I like. I saw this little rabbit and just thought he was adorable. Okay, um, And I'm going to change his size to 8 inches. And this is a backdrop. And that's about 8 inches. I just need it for a guide. I'm going to go to this one. And if you look at here, let's analyze this block a little bit. If you look at this block, Let's make it, you know what, this is actually a five patch. I'm going to make it five inches, and I'll show you why. All right. And set my grid to, grid settings, to one inch. This helps me a little bit. And say OK. Now, when I look at Little Rabbit here, let's... Um, zoom in on him a little bit, I can see that really I have a five patch. You can tell because there's, he's got a little bit of white space around it, so it's not going to fit perfect. I can stretch it just a hair. Just a hair. <laughs> Did you get that? Sorry for the Oh, time. that's bad. Um, that was bad. <laughs> uh, okay, so anyway. Here's one square, two squares, three squares, four squares, five squares. And there's five going down. So here's what I'm going to do. Let's open up a blank page here. I'm going to go to my quilt blocks and do similar to what I did before and go to um, a five patch. And let's see what we've got. What we have in that block is mostly half square triangles and... Um, squares. So let's find one that's got a good combination of that. Actually, this guy right here I think does. So I don't have to recreate the artwork. 
I just need to right click and copy him because you remember underneath, oops, I've got the other backdrop. So it won't let me put two backdrops in the same picture. So I copied him. Now I'm going to come over here, click my select tool and paste and make him five inches by five and click apply. All right, now all we have to do is change around the different blocks until we get it the way we want. So I'm going to take this block, actually, I'm going to move this block out of the way, and I'm going to take this one, right click, copy it, and paste it, and move it over here. Okay. And then this is green, and ooh, this one's just going the wrong way. Let me select this block and rotate it. So you can just kind of have fun making a puzzle out of it. I'm going to make that green, and this one is green. And we'll have to, I keep dragging the ruler in there, sorry about that. Uh, we'll rotate him so the angle's going the other way. And I'm going to make you green. And you, I'm going to delete you. And I haven't pasted anything since the last one. So if I paste again, it's going to give me that same block. And we'll align these in a minute. My snap to grid isn't um, working for me. So I'm going to rotate, rotate. Okay, then you're green. Now you are yellow. And you and you, I'm holding down my control key to do that. You all are yellow. And actually, you all are all one unit. And I'm going to select each one of you and make you uh, combine you right here. Okay, so that's just one piece of fabric. Then you're green and you're green. And you need to go away. I'll delete you. I'll delete you. I'll delete you. All right, and what's going down the sides? Oh, those are all solid, so I'm just going to move. Oops. Control Z to undo. I'm going to move this square down. Would it be easier to group those? Yeah, it could be. Okay. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, it would be. Thank you for that. Not a problem. <laughs> uh, unless you just like playing with it. Okay, so that one's that way. Oh, and this is the right way here. I'm going to control insert, shift insert. I just copied that block and put it here. And actually, I could. Um, I'll delete that one. And actually, once once we get one side done, we can just copy and paste it to the other. I'm going to control insert, shift insert, and move that one up there. Now, let's get our colors right. Um, I'll make that red. So we've got pink, 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 or red. And pink, oops, I have to ungroup that one. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. You are all the same color. We'll make you. We'll make you orange. There you go. And you are green. And you are red. Now, if we align these using our alignment tools, so that they're all lined up that way. Ooh, that worked pretty well. Um, and then we can align these this way. All right, so now I could really get rid of these over here, change that color to red, up oh, red, not orange, there we go, and take this section here, copy, paste, move it over, and mirror image it. And there you go. We just made a little bunny rabbit.
Oh, that is cute. And wouldn't that be cute with cute little buttons here? You could do embroidery stitches here. In fact, you could do those with this program because you can make embroidery stitches. I can take my run stitch function, come in here and do that. Of course, I would change the color. Let's make it um, purple. Okay, and then do select my purple. We'll do another one. This one, choo -choo, from here to here, and add that to my design when I'm done. Uh, and do the third one, one here to here. Now, let's look at it in 3D. See, I could just move that right over. Oh, I got to group them. Would be a good suggestion, right, Dory? Okay, so I have nothing those. to say. <laughs> <laughs> and there you go. So he's got whiskers too. So, oh, I like any that. other questions? We're kind of running low on time, but that's ways that you can create your own blog. Um, of course, you can go into any artwork program like Real Draw or something like that if you have it, uh, uh, and it might be easier. But you can certainly do it within the program and play with these blocks and line them up. And this one you would do. You know, you would do this whole row here, and then this whole row here. You would create these two rows, the top and the bottom. Well, actually, just the top one, because you could add these to the bottom one. But we'll do that. That will be a more advanced class in uh, how it sews it together at a later time. So any other questions? We've got a couple of minutes left. No, we're good. Um... I have to say thank you very much. I like the bunny. Isn't that cute? Yes, I it like is. it too. I don't, I, and I would tell you where I found it, but I can't recall, so I can't really give that to you. Um, I don't know where That's I got okay. it. That's okay. You I can make on me Kim one though. Okay. Well, I'd like to thank everyone for coming, and um, I appreciate your attendance, and I hope that help oh. answer some questions. Yes, we have one last one, and you know it's one that I can't even answer. What's that? What size pixels are good for artwork? If we're going to go shopping in Google, what is it, 300 uh, by 300, 400 by 400? Oh, the bigger the better. The bigger the better. 300 by 300 is actually pretty small. Okay, um, so let's start at 6. I would, I would try and do that. If it's a real clear picture and it's small, you may be able to blow it up and it um, and at least be good enough to trace, uh, you know, with your artwork. And I've done that with some files, like if they have fabric on them, uh, and those are the ones I usually like the best. Let's open up a new one. And like this is one, this one. I really like this one. Um, but you see, it's fabric, and it's um, it, it doesn't work well with artwork. But it's clear enough for me to trace, so I could bring my my uh, artwork tools in and do that. I mean, I could actually draw a filled triangle myself with the points by just selecting uh, the pen and coming up and clicking and clicking and clicking and get back on the same point um, and then adjust it as I need it. And with this block, you would only need to do, let's get that out of the way, this area right here, this quarter of it. You see there's a, an X going through the center. So each one of these are actually the same. This purple square is the same as this blue square. Is the, same. the white square is the same as the green polka dots and so on. So look at the files and analyze them. And this came from piecebynumber.com. And it's just an adorable block. Um, but um, just to play around with things. And I'm sure they have copyright. So don't, you know. So yeah, just be careful when you're taking anything yeah, copyright. So, yeah. yes. You want to use we, public we domain. Yes, yes, just public domain. So, um, all right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Dory, and all of our great support staff. I appreciate your help, and we'll see you next week. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening.
Thank you, Lisa and Nancy.